Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Today, guys, I'm actually going to cover a company that I've actually covered here on the channel before, but it was years ago. I believe it was, what, 2021 when I first covered it, if I'm not mistaken. It. So it's been a long, long time. And it's a company that, honestly, I thought it was going to be a whole lot better than what it actually turned out to be. You know, can't have it correct all the every single time. But I really would like to revisit it because it actually has earnings today, as if you guys are seeing this, as I'm recording this, it is obviously the prior day. But I want to take a look at none other than the company Smiths and Wesson. Now, full disclosure, I absolutely love guns, right? I own uh, a pistol, a Beretta PX4 Storm. So I, I'm a really big fan of guns. I really do like the Smiths and Wesson brand. And I want to see how their fundamentals actually look like. I want to also take a look at their earnings. And then I want to see how this kind of free cash flow approach on the 10 year perspective to see if maybe, maybe this is still a buy. It's a little bit weird. We'll take a look at this in just one second. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on X at Fatal Investing. And if you'd like to join us on the Discord, the link is in the description below. I just got a message that it, it doesn't work for somebody. Oh boy, I hope that it still does work. But if it doesn't work, guys, just let me know and we'll send you a link. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So Smith & Wesson is a company that makes guns, ammo, uh, you know, protective gear. Uh, so it's not really a point for me to actually take a look at their... Um, at their uh, overall summary, right? They make guns and guns accessories, that kind of stuff. However, let's get started with the um, with the earnings, at least the earnings summary. And well, what they did last time on March seventh, EPS normalized actual came in at nineteen cents. That was a beat by nine cents. EPS gap actual seventeen cents. That was a beat by seven cents. And the revenue of one hundred thirty seven point four eight million beat by almost four million dollars. Now this is interesting because in the next uh, earnings that we're actually going to have today, right on six twenty, EPS normalized estimate, guys thirty six cents. EPS gap estimate thirty four cents. Revenue of one hundred fifty six point eight million. There is no revisions here. So this company has not been revised at all in the past 90 days. Very, very interesting to say the least. Now, if we take a look at their overall earnings, we could actually see that this $137.5 million that they just did last quarter, guys, they're up 6.6%. Q3 gross margin of 28.7 and non-gap gross margin of 29.1 and Q3 EPS of 17 cents per share. Q3 adjusted EBITDA margin of 15.6. I think the main thing that's going to come down to this company is going to be that revenue. So you guys can see the company just isn't, it's not like a major thing that people are, I guess, inter no, I wouldn't say interested in, but like, it's not like one of the big, big ones that people really focus on. Now, I do have to mention one thing in regards to the whole gun business. And that is the fact that at least here in the United States, more and more states are actually taking on something called constitutional carry, meaning that there is no requirement to have a license for either open or concealed carry. In fact, here is the proof when it comes to that. And right here, you guys can see that taken from the USCCA, we can see that there's a lot of states, guys, with permitless slash constitutional carry. Everything in the green is constitutional carry. Basically, you can have a gun here and uh, the only requirement is just, A, you got to pay for it and you got to pass the federal FBI background check. After that, you just you just you put it on the side, either conceal it or not, and then you're good to go. So there is no requirement of that. So things like this is, uh, is a point to note that at least here in the United States, the ownership of guns is actually becoming more and more prominent. In fact, as of uh, what, 2023, Florida just signed constitutional carry uh, for anybody 21 and up. And even actually, even as it actually hasn't even happened yet. Louisiana, as you guys can see right over here, is going to implement a, a permitless carry, i.e. constitutional carry, beginning July 4th. How ironic, how, how, how perfect is that, right? July 4th of this year. So yeah, on July 4th, another state will be signed on to, um, to this. Well, it, it already is counted as part of it, but officially, it'll officially be part of the constitutional carry map. So the fact that more and more states are implementing this tells me that more people are going to probably own it, or at least the availability to own it will become easier, right? Less restrictions, more people will most likely do it. Meaning a company like Smith & Wesson will actually end up being fairly decent when it comes to the future. 
So now let's actually get started with the calculator. We got the ticker for SWBI market cap of $743.51 million. The PE, honestly, the PE is fairly high at 28.69. Current share price of $16.34. Now, if we take a look at this graph, this graph is actually kind of crazy. On the one year, this thing is up 40.38%, guys. Year to date, they're up 20.5%. I believe uh, the video that I made phew, years ago, I believe this thing was downwards of like, what, like $12, $9? It was actually pretty crazy. In fact, let's um let's actually take a look at this. So I did that video around 2021. So yeah, it was up where, actually it was, no, it was, there was no way that it was around $20. There's just no way. Um, I do believe, yeah, actually, I'm not fully certain anymore, but yeah, I did see it go down as low as around eight dollars and forty. So, you know, th this company has gone down from that peak of uh, of what July first, twenty twenty one, at thirty five dollars and forty cents. And you guys can see it has not reached it at all. In fact, it's been on a downtrend ever since. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, fifty two week high, you guys can see, is eighteen dollars and five cents. Obviously, the market did not open today. It was Juneteenth. Um, again, bank holiday. I don't really okay, whatever. And well, we can see that on Tuesday, this thing gained one point oh eight percent. So let's come back over here. We can see that they do pay out a dividend of. 48 cents and if we take a look at this dividend we could see that this is a yield of almost three percent so be very weary when it comes to that right a company that pays out three percent dividend yield eh, maybe a little bit of a red flag right a pair rate especially with this power ratio a 58.97 percent no five-year CAGR um and only three consecutive years of dividend payments guys so again that's not necessarily that safe ex dividend date passed as of march 20th payout date was on april 4th and they do pay their dividends quarterly and coming back over here based off of the current shares outstanding and this 21 cents or 48 cents in dividends sorry they pay out 21.89 million dollars every single year now this is where things become a little bit mucky because on the 10 year average free cash flow you subtract this 21.89 million dollars they're left with 60.77 million dollars as of the last year's free cash flow it is a whopping negative 94.8 million dollars the last year's free cash flow it is in the negative just full disclosure right here like the free cash flow is in the negative so just be very wary when it comes to that these pair ratios as we can clearly see for the last year's free cash flow it is negative 30 percent and for the 10 year it is it doesn't even get to 30 percent but this is very very scary right here let's take a look at their overall fundamentals and see what in the world this actually looks like so starting off with the net income guys okay this thing is not looking good in the slightest we got 10 years ago of 89.3 million dollars to one year ago of 36.9 million dollars yeah this is a massive decrease of 59 percent not only that we also have a negative four years ago here's the thing though four years ago was essentially covid for them so i don't really foresee this as a bad i i, I just don't know right i just don't know you would you would imagine that during covid uh you know man ammo prices were through the roof i remember that like buying buying ammo it was just so so expensive because of all the shortages that ammo prices were through the roof it was absolutely crazy so all in all when looking at this graph i'm going to take a look at uh probably like a 40 percent not really anything more than that now taking a look into now the free castle this is where i'm just like this is not good in the slightest right you got 10 years ago of 27.6 million dollars yikes to today of oh boy negative 73 million dollars that is a massive decrease of 364 percent with an average of 82.66 million dollars now if we take a look at this um one year ago value we can clearly see that their cash from operations completely bombed this thing just went from 137.8 million to 16.7 million and their overall capital expenditure shot up from 24 to 89.6 so that's a little bit of a concern however there is something i would like to just point out because it has to do with the previous uh with the pre previous metric and that is the, the net income so sorry about that um okay the one time that they did have a negative number in their in their net income as we just saw did not take into account covid year or at least not the whole entire year because you can see that their fiscal year ends in april so yeah but basically when this ended we were 
they only experienced COVID for like what, like 10 days, 11 days. You can clearly see the effects of COVID though when it came to this because the following year, taking into account COVID, from negative 61.2 million to a whopping 252 in the positive million dollars. So yeah, uh, COVID, I was right. COVID definitely did them good, right? Especially when it came to the net income. Free cash flow though, unfortunately, as you guys saw, it has fallen um, ever since, well, ever since their peak during COVID again, right? $315.3 million in cash operations. So all in all, I'm gonna have to give this guys a 35%. This negative number is way too close to, the, uh, to right now, right? To today. If this was further back, I'd be a little bit okay with it or not okay with it but like you, you know what i mean and be less of a worry than it being just one year ago so 35 percent for me on that one looking now at the revenue this one actually doesn't look too bad uh obviously it has to be in the positive but we got 626.6 million dollars to one year ago 479.2 million dollars this is a decrease of 23.52 percent however the, the graph is slightly increased you can see that's almost like a pattern in a way kind of uh, i'm gonna give this guys a 45 percent overall now taking a look at the assets as a reference only here you go and the liabilities wow man they actually brought down their liabilities after covid that's actually really good it's actually really good they also brought down their assets as well but all in all, though, I do like the fact that their liabilities did come down a little bit. And we can see that the assets minus the liabilities is actually not looking too shabby either. Increasing, obviously, the drop uh, three years ago. But all in all, it is still on the uptick. Average total assets, it is $597.92 million. Liabilities of $261.21 million. And a difference of $336.71 million. I'm going to give this guy a 65%. Now, the next metric. The cash flow minus the liabilities. Okay, this is actually this is actually kind of crazy because we actually have a positive number three years ago. That's actually incredible. That's actually incredible. You rarely, rarely see that. And on top of that, this is not a case that is just one blip. Look at this. They've actually had instances of the cash flow increasing much more than the liabilities so i look at this and i'm just like man this is actually not looking too bad even as of one year ago it is closer to zero than that of seven years ago so all in all guys with a positive number there i'm gonna have to give this a 100 percent, right absolutely this is an easy easy 100 percent now, the next metric, the shares of standing also looks really solid as well, going from 55.4 million shares to today of 45.6 million shares. That is a decrease of 17.69%. And from the previous year to the current year is another decrease of 0.87%. Now, this is not a consistent decrease, not at all. However, what I see here is, is that they issue when they issue or they issue when they have to issue and they buy back when they have to buy back. I, I like it, right? You don't always just because a company's issuing shares doesn't mean that it's bad. They have to they have to treat it on a case by case basis. If a company's at all time highs like Nvidia or Broadcom, I would actually be very upset if they were to buy back shares at such high valuation. So I see this and I gotta give it hundred percent. And lastly, cash and equivalents, they currently hold $47.4 million with an average of $83.05 million. Overall grade. It's 57, right? 57%. The main issue is unfortunately the profit metrics. That's the one thing that you don't want the issue in. Um, so it's a little bit better than half. It's treading towards the uh proceed with caution, but 57, man, it's it, it honestly feels like that, right? It honestly feels like it's a 57% kind of company where it, it doesn't get there, but it's so close to being there. They just have to do it a little bit better. Again, a lot of factors could come in, into this, uh, again, with the constitutional carry thing uh, and even valuation, right? Valuation can also drive this number for you uh, a lot more. Also, do you believe that Smith & Wesson will go away? Guys, guns or at least gu gun manufacturers are under a really high regulation, like severely high regulation. It's almost as bad as like Boeing, right? So... Unless something were to happen, you know, for a new company to supplant them, and by new I mean like ones that aren't there already, like Beretta or or anything of the sort, um, you know, unless something like that were to happen, I don't foresee this company going away anytime soon. But 
Let's actually jump into another valuation and see what the 10-year average free cash flow actually tells us when it comes to this. Alrighty, so let's take a look at this. Right off the bat, $28.06, not adjusting for debt, and $27.88 adjusting for debt. Let's put in some numbers, shall we? So we get the projected share buyback. We can see that they've been doing it around 1.89% every single year on average, right? On average. And well, um, I'm going to have to say, guys, I'm going to have to say one, two, and three. Maybe, maybe that's even too much. Maybe like half. No, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go say one, two, and three percent for this one. Again, three percent is really pushing it, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with it, right? I'm going to go with it. Now, for the revenue, they've been doing on average basically every single year, 6.19 percent. This is also taken into account COVID, which is that was a massive spike when it came to that. Um, when it came to that revenue so maybe a little bit less i guess for the lowest assumption i'm gonna have to say at around two percent for the median let's say at around four percent and then for the highest assumption i'm gonna say roughly what it is right now right six percent now you guys can see that these numbers are looking a bit crazy right 39 dollars and 89 to a whopping 78 dollars and 59 however the recovery of the return it's Smith and wesson they i don't foresee them they're not a tech company right i can't expect them to grow at 30 percent like a broadcom or nvidia so i'm gonna have to just say guys match i don't know if i want to say just match the market but i'm gonna say match the market and then i'm gonna change it to probably eight percent even lower than the market but you guys can see that with 10 percent wow okay this is actually interesting 13 dollars and four cents not adjusting for debt to 21 dollars and 73 cents and adjusting for debt 1283 to 2148 with a margin of safety of 5 10 and 15 1091 to 20 dollars and 41 cents all right Current share price of $16.34. We are essentially smack in the middle, right? We are, we, we're, we're there. We are essentially there. Now, if we're to lower this just a smidge, uh, let's just say 8%, right? Let's just say 8%. The numbers do shoot up. However, honestly, I think just 10%, because think about it, guys. 10 years is a really long time. 10 years is a really, really long time. So I think 10% actually does make sense. And if you believe these numbers that the company will grow, at around 4% in the next 10 years and buy back 2% of shares, which is in line with what they've done before. And pretty much both of these or both of these, right? Um, yeah, it's looking like a good buy right now uh, in accordance to these assumptions. Uh, people think that I'm telling people that this is a good price right now. No, no, no. In according to these assumptions, it's looking like a good buy right now. Make your own assumptions. The calculator is available for free. Please, guys, this is not financial advice. Stay in every single video. It's not financial advice. So, yeah, based off of this, guys, it's looking fairly decent. Now, in regards to a dividend, um, yeah, this dividend is actually a little bit crazy. So, we can see here that putting in $6,215, this gets you $182.57. However, uh, I got to bring you guys back to this uh, because this is, uh, I just noticed this. SWBI is at risk for cutting its dividend. Yeah. Not surprising, right? Not surprising. So I think that they might cut their, or I think that as well, that they are at risk to cut the dividend. So uh, please do not just buy into a company just because it has that 3% yield and that you're getting $182.57 per year. Please don't, right? Please don't. Do your own due diligence. Uh, if you like the company, then okay. If you believe that, you know, that they're going to be good in the next 10 years, then okay. Make that, that decision for yourself. I'm not here to make that decision for you. So all in all, Smith & Wesson, the company I like, uh, I like guns, uh, you know, yeah, it really just depends up to you. A lot of people will say, how could you like this company? It makes guns. Blah. There's no such thing as moral investing. All right, period, end of story. I like guns. I like oil. Um, I don't see weapons ma manufacturers as a, as a bad thing because they're going to be, my money's going to be taken away from me anyways. So I may as well get, get some of it back, right? You know, I like guns. Tell me what you guys think about this company. Um, and tell me if you think that more states will do constitutional carry and will companies like these, will they actually end up being really good in the future? But anyways, that pretty much does it for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as Rumble. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. If you would like to join us on the Discord, the link is in the description below. If it doesn't work, we'll send you a link. Hopefully it does work. And with that said, guys, peace out. And we will see you all next time.